Hello, this is H.J. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV! Let's head on into Baron Castle at last. Found all the enemies in the ancient waterway here, so should be clear sailing from here. Well, we're not really sailing through the water, but you know what I mean. How is there water up here not draining into the waterway there? You got me on that one. But anyway, yeah, we got, well, obviously we have a moat around the castle, but you couldn't go down here before. I like how they did that in this version of the game. Because in the, the 2D versions of the game, you can actually go down into the water, or not the waterway, but you could at least go into uh, the moat there. So you'd already know that there's something going to be happening. But first things first, I do want to rest up here for free, as long as I'm in the area. Don't worry about Golbez or anyone. He won't bother you while you're sleeping. You can only kill the good guys when they're actually at full power. Then you can do it. Where is everyone around here anyway? Well, let me check the quarters here. No frat party. Huh. Well, where'd everyone go? That's odd. Huh. So, we broke into... Maybe they're all out, um... Yeah, maybe they're all out to, on another invasion or something that we didn't know about. Well, I grew up in ta the town, probably, but yeah. Nah, I think you're just being paranoid, Yang. Oh, could be. It's the smell! But anyway, okay, one thing you want to do while you're here, definitely equip the Ancient Sword on Cecil there, because it can inflict Curse. Uh, it is a little weaker than the Mythgraven Blade, but it's not as completely useless as it was in the original, or the 2D versions of the game. So, I'm probably still just going to sell it, just for the money. But, whatever. So, let's head on over to the throne room, then. Hmm? What's going on? Lord Captain! I mean, Lord Captain! And my pronunciations aren't that bad. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, all right. Oh, nuts. Well, all right, now we got more pa party members. But we can only have five. Where's the sixth one gonna go? Well, they made it work in Final Fantasy Legend 3, so. Hmm? What, what, what do you mean? Well, they don't use deodorant, so... Oh. Nuts. You insolent fool! Or, well, more like incompetent fool, but you know what I mean. Yeah, we need another night in the party. Nuts. Damn you, Bagan. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal! For boss time! He's actually not that bad compared to some of the recent bosses we've been fighting. But anyway, yeah, um, there's three parts to Bagan. The two arms and the body itself. You want Porum to cry to reduce the defense and have Yang attack the body there. Well, Yang and Cecil. Cecil, I would like to try and get Curse on Bagan if I can. If not, well, not the end of the world. Whoa, what happened to you? But anyway, yeah, you can have Palum or Tella cast Break on the arms to insta instantly kill them. But you don't want to kill both of them, because if you do, he'll revive them. And also, as you can see there, if you cast any magic on the body there, he'll counter with Reflect. So you basically get one free shot on him. So that's why I wanted to use 
Blizzaga there. Or you could use any elemental spell, whatever. Although I heard one source say that... Uh oh uh, break, 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 break! I heard one source say that Bacon was weak to ice, but I haven't... Well, you didn't see the weakness message pop up there, so I don't know. But yeah, if uh, you don't kill the arms quickly enough after you kill the body, he, they will kill you by exploding. And Toad, which is almost completely pointless in this version of the game, because any enemy that's actually susceptible to it is immune to it. Na or not susceptible to it. Any enemy that it would actually be useful against is immune to it. So, yeah, it kind of sucks. Oh, well. Nuts. Now, you're already a monster, Yang. No one can change that about you. Well, we could go up to the throne room, Tella. But before we do that, let's go get some treasure. I mean, after all, there's no guards around here anymore, so why not help ourselves? You don't have to do it now. Most of this treasure isn't really that good anyway. But I'm going to go for it anyway. Yeah, you don't even have to press a button in the 3D versions of the game. Doors automatically open for you. That's what happens when you make all your soldiers invisible. They uh, can't guard anything anymore. Well, actually, if they were invisible, you'd still be able to block them, wouldn't you? With an invisible plot wall. But, uh, no, not today, I guess. Yeah, where is everyone? They better not be getting drunk. But anyway, while we're over here, we can get into the East Tower. All right. Finally get to see what's in here, and what it looks like. Exactly like every other tower in the game. But that's okay, I like it. At least I got nice uh, area rugs everywhere. Now you don't even have to go downstairs and back upstairs to get that chest. But if you look over here, there's a hidden treasure. And if you try to go this way, we get blocked by a real invisible plot wall. That one's literally invisible, for a change. Usually when I say invisible plot wall, well, it's actually clearly visible. Just not until you get, like, right up to it. Like that other game that shall not be named. And one more treasure trove. I think there's a hidden treasure around here. But I can't seem to find it. Another one, I mean. Ha-ha! Secret treasure! All right. I knew there was one around here. I'm not crazy! Oh, okay, maybe I am crazy. I thought that was the first floor. Took, I, I didn't count backwards properly. I thought I went straight from three to one. Five, three, sir! You can count on H.C. Bailey because H.C. Bailey can count. But anyway, okay, so we're all done here. Gotta head up to the throne room, and I got a bad feeling about this. Maybe I'm just being paranoid, but... Uh, first things first, I do want to remove all of the twins' equipment, except for the bard's tunic. Yes, finally gonna put those to use. Let's get the Mythraven blade on Cecil here. Everything else should be the same. The reason why I want the bard's tunics on my mages is because it protects against silence. And that'll be really useful coming up here. Let's see, Yang is pretty much going to be the same. Tella, well, now that I've gotten rid of uh, Palin's stuff, might as well equip that on him. Give him a little better in intellect boost. And let's see, give you a Bard's Tunic as well. And I think that we're all set and ready to go. Oh, MP, huh? I could go all the way back to the tower. Yeah, it is a little bit of a walk, though. How many ethers do I got? You know what? Screw it. Burn it. Burn the witches! I mean, ether. Yeah, I've got plenty of them. 
The, the e regular ethers, not part of the Too Good to Use Club. You can use them all you want. Although, we do have the Osmos spell. So I suppose I could use that. It's really good in this version of the game, too. Hmm? Well, what do you mean? Hmm? Well, he didn't do a very good job. Did you name all toilets in the kingdom after him? No. No, he wasn't that harsh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. It can't be. Nuts. I wish they would have given him a more epic transformation, but... Oh well. Kneel before Zod! I mean, Knazo! For boss time! And this time, he is not a pushover. He is. He might be the hardest boss in the game, relative to your strength at that point in time if you're not doing a lot of level grinding. Okay. One thing I did there was I had Cecil cover Palum. So that way, if Palum ever gets a physical attack, Cecil will cover for him, and he'll take all the damage, so that way Palom won't die, because pretty much mages are really squishy in this fight. They'll, they can get one shot real easily by Kanazo's physical attack. So yeah, used a unicorn horn there, so that way I can uh, recover from sleep there. A uh, unicorn horn, what they do is that they remove all temporary stab assailments on the party there. So, uh, what I'm doing... Uh-oh, okay, you see the water surging to his feet there? You want to have Palom, or Talop, cast Thunder on them really, really fast, or he's going to use that Tidal Wave or Tsunami or whatever it's called on you. So, you remember what happened last time, viewers. You don't want that happening again. So, yeah, let's uh, cast Thunder, and that'll make that go away. Uh, one thing I'm doing with Yang there is I'm having him use focus up to three times because uh, he, Kanazo will counter physical attacks with hold. That'll paralyze you. So you want to watch out for that. Let's see. Yeah, have Cecil cast protect since he has that in this version of the game. Shell will also help as well. And I, I'm having Tella cast Blizzaga because, well, boss is a turtle, and as we all know, in JRPGs, turtles are weak to ice. Absolutely. But yeah, I do want to uh, wake up Yang there. Jolly good. And now let's just have Cecil defend there. So yeah, while uh, Kanazo is in, is in his turtle form, he's weak to ice. When he has that tidal wave coming up there, uh, he's weak to thunder. So what I want to do now is uh, get poison and sap on him. Or, well, I already got sap on him. I kind of glossed over that. But yeah, that'll help drain his HP. Because he's got a lot of HP. Okay, he didn't counterattack. I got lucky there. But a lot of times, he will do that. And, uh, well, yeah, you want to be ready for that. Use a, either a unicorn horn or whatever to uh, cure that problem. Yeah, when he's in his turtle shell, yeah, he takes a lot less damage. But, yeah, you see how when uh, Tella casts a spell on him, he counters with silence. So, you want to watch out for that. That's why we got the Bard's tunics on everyone, and that's why you see that it said no effect, because he was immune to it. Okay, uh, yeah, Palin. Thank you. Of course, if you really wanted to make this fight easy, you could just cast slow on him. But, that's not how I roll in this LP. And let's see. Yeah, I want to get an Aether on Tella, so that way I can get one more Blizzaga in there. Maybe two if I need it. Thanks, game. I can't cover everyone. Not yet, anyway. 
Oh yeah, by the way, you might have noticed, um, Kanazo casts slow on the party, but he'll just do that over and over and over again. So, I don't think there's any point in trying to worry about it. Yeah, it's annoying, but it would take forever to... You would never be able to keep up with it. So, just live with it. But Oh, right, we got it. And I made that look a lot easier than it actually is, viewers. Because, I mean, if you don't have silence protection, or you don't know about his counterattacks, I, I mean, he's going to take a long time to kill. Because you're going to be constantly curing stuff, and buffing up again and stuff. And, yeah, it's just a nightmare. But, fortunately, we made it. All right. Hey, hey, Sid. How's it going? You monster! I mean, uh, well, you're not a monster anymore, but yeah. Yeah, I was kind of there. Nuts. How does everyone know Golbez anyway? I mean, you'd figure he wouldn't really show up that often. I mean, he, he's a leader. He, he delegates. Though I do like that he does show up a lot. Gotta have more villain involvement in JRPGs. Can never have enough of it. Can't just let the villain disappear for like half the game or something while we're doing side quests or something. Speak for yourself, man. Ha ha. Yeah, Tella and Sid, not exactly the best role models for the children. Of course, then again, neither is Cecil, so, uh, Yang, you want the kitties? No. No. Now, for the cutscene coming up here, in the PC version, the dialogue gets screwed up for some reason. It gets out of sync, and some of the lines start overlapping each other. So what I've done is I've edited it so they play properly. So, just so you know, if you're playing the game. Now that is how you do an evil laugh. <laughs> it's barred. Nuts. This one too. What are we gonna do now? Can we find a way to break out of here? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy IV. This is H.G. Bailey signing off. Have a good day. <laughs>